The Soviet Union should have fallen apart. Every empire did. The British Empire used to own half of the world. And this is not about the nature of the system. It is not about communism or capitalism. I could not tell this to anyone, but I knew that the Soviet Union would fall apart, just as any empire did. But my guess was that it would last for about 9 or 10 years longer than it did. But the breakup began in 4 years. There were a few. One of them was Eduard Shevardnadze's resignation. I predicted that the dictatorship was coming and that nobody knew who would be the dictator, and that democratization and perestroika were in danger. This was my point, and to make that point and in protest against the looming dictatorship, I quit. After I made the statement, I stepped down from the rostrum and I went back to my seat. My statement was met with standing ovations. People knew that some danger was afoot. And after Shevardnadze confirmed it, they knew the danger was real. Then academic Lihachov took the floor. He was a respected man from Leningrad, a deputy. He said that Shevardnadze is a good minister, that people trust him. So he requested the assembly to ask me to change my decision. I waved my hand from my seat, saying that it's not going to happen. The plan was to give Gorbachev as the official president, but virtually Gennady Yanayev would be in charge. He was the first deputy of the president. Yanayev was a very ill-tempered man, very crude. Later, I learned that once he would come to power, it was planned to execute about 20 to 25 officials. Shevardnadze was first on the list. The empire would have lasted longer if it were not for a confrontation between two men. I mean Gorbachev and Boris Yeltsin. No matter how hard I tried to reconcile them, it didn't work. I want to mention another thing too. Back then my colleagues and I thought that the main threat to the Soviet Union stemmed from the United States. Ronald Reagan claimed that the United States could create space-based nuclear weapons. We then spoke to our nuclear scientists. They said that creating such space-based weapons was impossible. Some five years went by and the same scientists came back, apologized and said that creating space-based weapons was possible if the economy allows it. That prompted us to start the attempt to sort out our relations with the United States. I met Reagan seven times. You see it there in the picture. Gorbachev and I had agreed that if Reagan gets hostile, I should remain calm, that I should not have words with him. Our first meeting was like hell. Reagan said, you are an empire of evil, but I'm meeting you for diplomacy's sake. But I should not be receiving the representatives of the evil empire. The second meeting went on in a more reserved environment. After the third meeting, I found Reagan changed. He invited us to lunch. He was telling jokes. We were all laughing and then laughing some more. We couldn't even eat. He knew so many jokes and was so witty. I think it was our fifth meeting when I told him, I have been to 65 countries. I have met presidents and prime ministers, but have never met a man who knew so many jokes and could tell them so well. Reagan became sad all of a sudden. He said, there is something happening to me. He said that he remembered perfectly well what happened 20 years ago, but could not recall things that happened yesterday. This was the Alzheimer's. I told him not to worry about it. It will go away, I said. Later Kissinger would tell me, we were always afraid that the Soviet Union would attack us, that the Soviet Union would start a war. Now that the Soviet Union is gone and there is no threat of a Soviet attack, we are left without a purpose. We do not know what to do now. Now there are attempts to form new unions among neighbors. Kazakhstan, Tajikistan, Azerbaijan, Ukraine and others. Belarus. But there will be nothing remotely similar to the Soviet Union. 
the issues that the former Soviet countries had with one another traditionally. Yeltsin tried to create a union of Slav nations. It didn't work. Now they are trying to create the Eurasian Union. Some nations may join it, but how long-lived the union is going to be is anyone's guess. Well, look at Russia. You can't rule out Russia breaking up into smaller parts. In Dagestan, there are more than 2.5 million people. There is also Chechnya, Tatarstan, which produces millions of tons of oil. There is also Bashkiria. I think these peoples, sooner or later, will demand independence. And this could lead to the farther disintegration of Russia. I made one very good decision. When the young people invaded the Georgian parliament, Saakashvili, Zhvania and others, I came home and I told my wife not to worry. I said I'm not going to let this confrontation escalate to bloodshed. I will step down, I said, and I did. As a sign of gratitude, Saakashvili and Zhvania left this house to me.